good money. Um, of course, this is a Supreme Success Consult Academy. Uh, these are online lecture, literature class, of course. Uh, today, we are going to lay particular emphasis on poetry, and of course, we are taking our navigation through the Atlantic Ocean of classical literature. And this is classical literature, and specifically, we are going uh, to death into a poem, a classical poem written by a Roman poet by the name Virgil. But before we actually delve into that, really, we have to talk a little bit about classical tradition of poetry. What is classical poetry? The classical period, of course, reverts to the literary traditions of ancient Greece and, by the same token, to the literary traditions of the ancient Rome. And, of course, the primordial genre of literature that existed and subsisted in human history is what we call oral literature. Invariably, it is called orator. So it is a form of literature that is rendered by words of mouth and transmitted from generation to generation. Hence, People's consciousness in social situations and conditions is expressed in oral form. Therefore, oral literature or orator is a collective experience of a people expressed collectively. It is a kind of literature to which no single person can claim authorship. And within the domain of classical poetry, of course, classical tradition of literature, uh, we have Homer. Of course, Homer happened to be a classical writer and is widely considered to be the first writer in literary history. He was a Greek poet. He drew his inspiration and admiration from Greek legends and myths. They are forms of oral literature. They are traditional stories about the beginning of a people, a race, or a community. One myth is more concerned about supernatural beings such as gods and goddesses. Legend deals with human beings such as heroes and heroines. Now, consequently, myths and legends, remember we're just trying to give explanation within the domain of classical literature. Consequently, myths and legends help to preserve a people's cultural heritage and belief system about nature and the natural habitats. So Homer, as I said earlier on, was a great poet, the first writer in literary history. He wrote the two famous Greek epic poems, namely the Iliad and the Odyssey. Homeric period spanned, of course, the centuries between 2,100 and 800 BCE. Greek writers, playwrights, philosophers, such as Gorgias, Aesop, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Euripides, and Sophocles. Of course, span the century between 800 and 200 BCE. The 5th century, of course, in particular, is renowned as the golden age of Greece. Rome conquered Greece in 146 CE, that is Christian era. So the Roman Republic was traditionally founded in 509 BCE. So Greek culture gave way to Roman power. Now, 
there existed a Greco-Roman culture, a kind of a synthesis of relatively two cultures. Now, Roman writers include Hophage, Horace, and Fegil. Remember, we are, of course, are trying to look into the poem, the classical poet, of course, Fegil, this uh, morning. So, fundamentally, the classical poet established the relationship between man and gods. They believed categorically that the gods controlled the affairs of men. So the epic emerged as the dominant poetic kind in this period. And poems were composed to celebrate and to honor the gods. The classical poets believed that poetry was written with divine inspiration through the muse. Of course, the muse is a goddess of inspiration. So they were also of the firm belief that poetry should be delightful, instructive, didactic, and must come naturally from a genus. This largely is because of the fact that poetry requires the clever use of words which undoubtedly includes the use of figurative expression. Uh, this is of course a quick introduction to the classical herald of poetry. Uh, we have to uh, continue of course uh, from this regard. And of course to the poem of the Jew. Remember that I mentioned categorically that Fijil happened to be a classical poet. And of course, the classical poets during the classical period, they concentrated specifically on the celebrations of the affairs of men as controlled by the gods. And this is exactly what we are going to witness in this poem. I remember that this poem consisted of about a hundred, I mean, a ten thousand lines. Remember? And of course, in terms of the structure of the poem, we can say in terms of the metrical line of the poem and the metrical component, of course, so to say, we can say that this poem is written in dactylic hexameter. When we say dactyl, we are talking about trisyllables, right? That is stress syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. And hexameter, of course, means what? It means six lines. Of course, in a particular uh, six meters, a particular line of the poem. All right, we have to delve into the analysis of the poem very quickly, but we have made a list of the characters. In fact, we have sort a range, a long array of lists of characters in this particular poem, and we have to see how to give the analysis and um, the mentioning of these characters uh, during the course of a night analyzing uh, the, this particular poem, right? We have the mortars. These are human beings in the poem. We have Enis, that is the protagonist. When you look at this, you can see the reflection of the name of the protagonist uh, compared to the title of the poem. And when we have a character that carries the titular name of the particular literary work, we call such a character an eponymous character or a title or titular character. So Enis is the protagonist in this poem. Then we have Archises. We have Creusa, we have Escanias, we have Dido, we have Sakias, we have Bichimelion, we have Anna, we have Thona, we have Achates, we have Thanos, we have King Latias, we have Queen Amata, of course we have Lavinia, their daughter, we have King Ivanda, we have Pallas, we have King Tachyon, then we have Sinon, we have Drances, we have Jonna, we have Camilla, we have Polydorus, we have Arons, we have King Priam, we have Queen Ecuba, we have Hector, we have Paris as one of the characters under the Mortar character, we have Andromache, we have Elin, Elin Ospata, we have King Melanus, we have Achilles, we have Pyrrhus, we have Agamemnon, we have Ulysses, we have Sibi of Kuli, we have Polodora, we have King Labas. And now we have the gods. The gods. You no, know, 
the celebration of the gods and all that. Under the gods, we have Jupiter, the, of course, the king of the gods. We have Neptune, the god of the sea. We have Mercury, the messenger god. We have Cupid, you can see the, the god of love. We have the Berinas, the god of the river Tebas. We have Saturn. We have Apollo, the god of sun. We have Elas, the god of, of course, the god of river as well. Then we have Goddesses. We have Juno, the queen of the god. We have Venus, the god of love. We have Minerva, the god of war. We have Diana, the god of altar and all that. We have Alecto, the god of anger. We have Sibele. We have Eris, of course, also the god of misunderstanding. And these are the most the symbolic features in this poem, like the Dis, the river, the race. We have Golden Bow. We have River Acheron, we have Veryman Charon, we have Radamatos, we have Golden Apple, the Garden of Asperides, and according to Jupiter, to study this particular point, it is significant and important that because of the voluminous uh, pages that consist in this poem, in fact, we have to limit our analysis of the poem to two books. Because, of course, this particular book consists of 12 books. Uh, because we cannot, in a way, cover the whole, the totality of the books of which this particular poem consists of. That is why the Tupac says we have to, of course, limit our study of this poem to only book one and book two. So we have to cut it off here. So the next class we have to give the analysis of this poem. This is Supreme Sussex Academy, and we hold you to, to watch our online lecture, this literature class, and Mission to Christ to our lecture. And we, we also have to tell you categorically that Supreme Sussex Academy uh, is right there for you. And bring your daughters, your, your sons to our academy so that we have the best uh, lectural tutors here to give you the best of whatever it is you need to learn. So we to enter universities. And thank you so much for listening to us and watching our videos online. So bye for today.